Hi everybody. In this video, we're going to talk about postnatal epiphyseal bone growth or bone elongation. And this process picks up where we left off from endochondral ossification, which is the formation of a bone from a hyaline cartilage model. Now remember, at the end of endochondral ossification and just after birth, you have a long bone that is mostly compact bone in the diaphysis with an actively elongating medullary cavity, shown here in white, two somewhat bony epiphyses, and each epiphysis will have articular cartilage at the tip, which is going to be important for synovial joint function, but also an epiphyseal plate. And the epiphyseal plate is going to be of key focus here because this is going to be where bone elongation will occur. So to start here, I'm going to first erase the top of each epiphysis. And the reason for doing this is because it'll allow me to eat more easily show you what is going on at each epiphysis. That is the creation of new cartilage and the creation of new bone from the old cartilage. And at the very, very end, I will draw back the top of each epiphysis to show you what the finished product will look like. So, throughout this, we will have new cartilage being added in these directions. The old cartilage will become bone in this direction. So in other words, as new cartilage is being added, the old cartilage is becoming calcified and becoming bone. Okay, and This is going to be really important, the fact that cartilage is replenished throughout, so that way you can continue to make more and more bone from the old cartilage. If this did not occur, then you would never get bones elongating to the appropriate size needed. So let's get started. So first, what you will end up having is you will have a new layer of cartilage being laid down. And as you lay down that new layer of cartilage, the old layer will become calcified and become new bone. Now as far as what's doing the calcifying, that will be osteoblasts. And the process is much the same as from what happened with the endochondral ossification. That is, osteoblasts secrete osteoid, the bone extracellular matrix, which will wrap around the chondrocytes and essentially suffocating them and preventing them from getting the nutrients in the oxygen that they need to survive. So this process continues time in and time again, where you have new cartilage being added. Okay. And then the old cartilage will become bone. And this whole process will start early on in childhood and will continue throughout life up until puberty. And at puberty, that is when this process will conclude and the person is at their maximum height. So I'll do one more round here. And then I'm gonna show you something that is gonna be really important because it's going to happen at the same time that you get this bone lengthening. So the same time that you have new cartilage being made and new bone being made, therefore the bone is elongating in size, you will get also some bone resorption and then bone remodeling. Now the reason this is gonna be important is because this will prevent each epiphysis from being so wide and so large in size that the diaphysis at this point, which is small and skinny, you cannot support it. So you need to get bone resorption and bone remodeling. That way, the bone can maintain its overall proportions. So in other words, bones will widen as they lengthen. Or, 
for every increase in length the bone will undergo, it will have an increase in width as well. So what this looks like is you will have osteoclasts that will start to whittle down the bone, so to speak. So it kind of starts to break the bone down, doing what osteoclasts do. And as it does this, right, as, these, as these osteoclasts do this, it is taking that broken down bone and, add an, and adding it to the diaphysis, making the diaphysis wider. So here we have bone widening as you get the bones elongating. So let's go one more round. Okay, you get new cartilage being made. Actually, let's go several rounds. Let's speed it up here. Okay, you get several rounds of new cartilage being made. And then from that, you will get the new bone. And then what will come after that will be more bone remodeling in which the osteoclast will break down that bone And then you can get some remodeling by which you take that bone and you make the diaphysis wider. And again, just to reiterate, this is important. That way bones can widen and become thicker so that way they can support the length of the bone that is increasing and also the weights of each epiphysis. Now obviously here you see the, the medullary cavity has an increase in size, but the medullary cavity is increasing in size as well. Remember it is actively elongating. So the osteoclasts are also breaking down bone here as well. So as the epiphyses are growing away from the diaphysis, the medullary cavity is elongating as well. So what you end up having in the very, very end is at the end when you have all the cartilage has been rapidly dividing and has stopped, you have all the cartilage has become bone, you have the medullary cavity that has now been completed, what you will end up with is you will end up with a long bone that is significantly longer than the original long bone. It is significantly thicker as well. At each end, and now I'm gonna draw the epiphyses back. At each end, you have large epiphyses And then this is also going to be where spongy bone will have formed. So you will have spongy bone making up the majority of each epiphysis. Okay. And the diaphysis will remain as compact bone. You will still have the articular cartilage 
for synovial joint function. Instead of the epiphyseal plate, you will have what is left of the epiphyseal plate, which is now compact bone. And you can think of it as kind of like a scar of where the epiphyseal plate was. And it is called the epiphyseal line. And then to finish everything up, as an adult, you will have yellow marrow filling in the medullary cavity as a storage of triglycerides. And then within the red bone marrow of long bones, you're going to have the red bone marrow in the spongy bone of each epiphysis. So that is what an adult long bone will be. So what we just went through here was postnatal epiphyseal bone growth or bone elongation. We talked about how you start off with a cartilaginous epiphyseal plate and that new cartilage is added. And as new cartilage is added, old cartilage becomes bone. And then you will get not only elongation of the long bone, but you will get widening as well in order to maintain the overall proportions of that long bone. 